My name is James Graves, and welcome to Night Journey Rewind, the podcast. You know, for the past, I guess it's going on five months now, four or five months, I've had the opportunity to host a jazz show in San Francisco at the Peacock Lounge. And I've had some incredible musicians, all from the Bay Area. Well, Eric White is not from the Bay Area, but, you know, um, um, you know Charlie Chen, uh, Mike Quigg, uh, James Mahone, and a few like that. So I got another exciting. Now, the first, let me, let me, let me, let me say this right. I saw this brother perform with Eric White, and I, Eric was telling me how bad he was. I said, "Okay, man, let me see how it is when you play with him, because I know how Eric is. You know, Eric is no joke when he's playing, and he pushes, and he expects That's that right. out of his. Especially, he got blessed when he had Jeff Chain watch." Yeah. <laughs> and you know yeah. how Jeff is, you know. Yes, so, but, I do. So anyway, I I checked him out. We had a decent show. We checked it out. And I said, man. So at the end of the show, I said, Jeff, I need you, bro. <laughs> I need you. <laughs> so we're so happy that he's going to be performing at the Peacock Lounge on the 26th of January. Welcome, Jeff Marsh. Welcome to the show. Hey, man. Thanks so much for having me. It's, it's great to be here. You know, you're from, you, uh, what, you grew up in Concord, California. I'm a Bay Area guy. Grew up in East Palo Alto. Okay. Love the Bay Area. But, you know, uh, and I saw that you went to school uh, in Massachusetts, and you really had some, oh, my goodness, I was looking at the people that, you know, that you were surrounded with that was teaching you also your playing. I mean, a great bassist, Cecil McBee, you know, Arturo Farrell. Uh, Bob Brookmeyer, and I interviewed Bob Brookmeyer about three or four years ago. So, so you got a list. So it seems like you found the foundation. First of all, drums, and then jazz. Yes. So it's interesting because my parents were weekend warrior musicians, as they used to be known as. You know, you would have the day job, and then you would go out on the weekends and you would play your shows and um they had a band that they led like that for about 20 years so i actually started off playing old rock and roll and country music when i was very little just hearing that that's what they were playing but within that was the blues and all different other kinds of music that i eventually came to understand that was inside of that music and um yeah and so then <laughs> Then as I progressed in my playing, I was into more rock and roll, heavier stuff. And then my 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 aunt, who's no longer with us, she she and her husband came to visit from Virginia. And her husband at the time was this really great drummer who could play a lot of progressive rock. And so he said, "Hey man, do you think you can do you think you can play some of this stuff?" So I started doing that, and it's and I could at a young age about. 12, 13, I was starting to play that kind of stuff. And from there, uh, the, the sax player who you're going to hear on the gig, his name's Michael Zilber. He went, he found me at, at Concord High School where I was going to school about 16 or 17. And he said, who is this? <laughs> These are his words. He said, who is this young drummer who can swing? And I didn't even know <laughs> what I was doing at that time. I had no idea. But there was something there and I was listening. I'd started listening to the music with friends. And then eventually I, he, he took me to uh, Las Madonna's College, which is over in Pittsburgh, in Pittsburgh, California. And uh, the dynamic Miss Faye Carroll, she, she, she's from Pittsburgh. And um, <clears throat> anyway, so, so he had me study and he went off to New England Conservatory when he was young. So he had, he kind of was like encouraging me. He's like, I think you could do it. And kind of from there, the, the rest is history. But I, I totally immersed myself in the music for many years. And um, I really had the great privilege of playing with so many great musicians out there and being surrounded by my peers that were all just so good. It just kind of brought me, it brought so me along. On another <laughs> level, right, right, right. Really, it did, yeah. Why the drum? I, I started playing drums when I was so young, I, I don't even remember why. <laughs> I, I can't remember why, to be honest. You started beating on things, huh? <laughs> <laughs> And my parents were like, here, take this, take this, hit this instead, you know. Mm -hmm. um, tr truth be told, I was really, like, the Muppets were on at that time when I was young. 
and animal was like I had enough energy to be animal. So I mm. think that's where some of that energy was channeled. And also too, like back to my parents being having a band, like they were different drummers. Always the, the rest of the band was solid, but the drum chair seemed to rotate in that band. And I think it was honestly because my parents, uh, they hear music rhythmically as well and so i think they just were like we need a good drummer you're you're great but not quite what we're looking for kind of a thing right so mm-hmm, mm-hmm. all these new drummers that came through would show me little bits and i would always want to climb on the drum set i always wanted to get on the kit i was always fascinated by how it looked and how it sounded and all of that so the drums just kind of picked me i feel like <laughs> but you know what i i, I, I crack up because i talked to a lot of drummers they said the worst thing that sucks about being a drummer at the end of the set you got to break everything down so the other guys will wind up i'm not saying you right now because you seem to be a very happily married man but they get all the women while you're still trying to break down your drum set <laughs> man it's so true it's so true <laughs> and the thing is and you know i, I was it um was it Lester Young? <laughs> he was a he used to be a drummer, and then he decided he wasn't getting exactly. he wasn't meeting the girls, so he became a horn player. <laughs> mm-hmm. Exactly, <laughs> I know. That so was too, right? But, yeah. that was <laughs> <laughs> My name is James Graves. This is Night Journey Rewind, and we are visiting well, Night Journey Rewind the podcast, and we're visiting with drummer Jeff Mar, who will be performing Thursday the twenty sixth in San Francisco at the Peacock Lounge. Two shows. One starting at 8 o'clock in yellow, and we always say 9.50, 9.30. You know, just depends on how it is. Uh, so anyway, man, when did you really, besides just really love playing the drums, when did you really decide to say, you know what, I really want to make this a professional career. And then, you know, even though you, you start out with other genres of music, and you're probably still doing that, and that's always a good to have in your retro part. Get it out, James. But what was it that just say, okay, that's it. This is what I'm going to do. I think that when I was um, when I first heard the music played in that way, and it made sense to me, I was probably about 17. And when I was at that age, I can remember being a You know, 17, 18, I remember being a senior in high school, and I was about to be a senior, actually, so I must have been right around that time. Um, I just was hearing, again, Michael Zilber uh, was was a band director at at Las Madonnas, and he started bringing out some of his friends to play, a pianist by the name of Rachel Z, who worked with Wayne Shorter in the 80s, and... um, Jimmy Earl, who was this great bass player. He's still a great bass player. Um, and Jimmy was playing with Chick Corea at the time. And so, and, and, and then he brought out Dave Garibaldi. And, you know, and then, and then the list kind of continued. And Steve Smith, for, he was playing with Steve Smith for a while, the drummer for Journey. But Steve was also in Steps Ahead. I was just, I, when I fell in, I just heard these players play at this level. And I was like, I got to do that. I got to figure out how to get to that. <laughs> so I started practicing it and I had no idea what it was going on. And, you know, and eventually it started right. to started make, make sense. sense. Right, right. Yeah. Let, yeah. Me put you, let me put you on the spot. Name, just, I know there's so many great, and we don't want to ditch any of them, but some of your favorite drummers that you enjoy listening to. Drummers who, who, uh, who I enjoy listening to uh, well, let me just start off with Jeff Tane Watts. Okay. It's a huge influence on my playing. Um, because when I was coming up, he was he was probably the one who was, in my humble opinion, pushing the music and the drums farther than other cats were. I mean, he has his own, really just his own voice. And it's just so many different great things. And, and I would see, I get to see him play live too. Mm-hmm. which was something special. But Elvin Jones, Roy Haynes, Tony Williams, um, a, a Duke Ellington drummer, uh, Sam Woodyard. Mm-hmm. Those are some of the influences that I, you know, um, I mean, yeah, like I, like we say, the list could continue on. But, right, right. But as far as like, 
of the people who I really work hard at, on trying to learn their style and get inside of it and be them, those were some of the guys who uh, inspired me. You know, um, um, this music is such a lovely and complex, simple but complex music. You know, uh, well, first of all, before I even say that, with each of those musicians and other jazz musicians, not just drummers, but others, you're able to what, listen to it and be able to make an alternative lick to maybe to what they're playing. Am I saying that right? Yeah. Um, yeah. I, it's a call and response. It's, you know, um, you know, I, that's kind of the easiest way to, to put it is I hear what somebody's doing and then I have a choice to make as to how I want to respond to what they're doing. Mm -hmm. There's yeah. a lot. Wow. Yeah. Um, we got to talk about the show that's coming up next Thursday, a week from, yeah, next Thursday. What do we expect to hear from the Jeff Mars Quartet? Um, I chose to kind of focus music, uh, focus on music from, uh, because I, I was able to get Michael on the gig, um, and he's a great tenor player. Um, I felt like what would be uh, appropriate is to, to play some music of Joe Henderson um, and focus on Joe. He, you know, he lived in the Bay Area for, for many years, and um, I was fortunate enough to also work with another great tenor sax player who's passed on now, Mel Martin. Uh, and Mel used to work with uh, Dizzy Gillespie and studied with um, uh, Benny Carter and uh, was, you know, under Benny Carter in, in Benny's band, also in uh, Joe Henderson's big band. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, and then I'm, and so I was just, I've always been inspired by Joe's music. And I thought, well, it would just be a lot of fun to do our own versions of some of Joe's tunes. They're just really fun to play as a drummer. So <laughs> that's great. Well, so you teach, you teach, uh, yeah. and you how is that going? What is the response from the kids? I honestly feel like it. I love the response that kids have to to music. It's kind of a, um, I guess it's kind of like, you know, any language that they experiment with the words, they experiment with different words that are powerful, you know, uh, mm -hmm. different words that they're just, they hear adults saying them. Um, and, and honestly, I feel like one of the biggest things that um, I, I like to hear from them is they're just very curious about well, why are they playing this here? Or why is this happening over here? And I, I try to kind of explain music in a way that is, you know, um, especially jazz, it, it truly is a language. It mm -hmm. really is a language. Mm -hmm. It's, and it's a language that's like, um, to quote Mike, Michael again, um, it, it's, uh, it's, it's a non-scripted language. Mm -hmm. Um, and so you don't really always know what the what somebody's going to say. And then you're not always sure how you're going to respond. So it happens all in real time. And that's that's the thing to me with with jazz. When I try to teach young people, they a lot of times these days, you know, with everything that's so numbers driven, you know, I feel like all our sports are all about the numbers and and this person can do this and they hit this this you know 355 and this person can run this time and it, I, I i like music in that way because it's like well how do you feel like you want to respond to what they're saying here's a certain set of things you got to learn now go out and and kind of once you internalize those responses pick one in the moment and use it you know that's there's no real right or wrong you yeah. know that's interesting because I'm learning how to play the bass. I retired now. I'm going to learn how to play the bass. And so sometimes when I'm with a couple of cats, they say, okay, you got the basic down. Now add your flavor to it or add something in between the two notes. So that's what yes. I'm working on now. So that's why I, I really understand what you're saying because that's exactly what I'm trying to do now, you know, learning how to play the bass. Emphasize, emphasize what is it? Just improvising with other things in between the structure of the song or the notes? Yeah, I think that I think that there's two parts to that. Like one is what is it that you have to say personally on that instrument? Um, how does that instrument how do you wanna 
speak to the rest of the, the rest of the group, not just the group, but the audience. What do you want to say? And so when you start to connect yourself to what you're playing on the bass or what I'm playing on the drums, that's when it starts to, um, that's that part that, that I think other musicians are talking about to like bring that. The other thing is to like connected to that is how do you want to place that quarter note on that instrument, specifically on the bass? The bass, I, I jokingly say to bass players, and I say this, I, like I said, as a joke, is I don't pay you to solo. I, I pay you to play quarter notes and the best quarter notes ever heard, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and I, and I'm, I truly believe that because that's the beauty of what a great bass player can do is just be that, be that rock, be that center, but also be able to kind of hear what's happening in the cracks and be able to adjust to what's happening, right, you know, right. and Ron Carter to me is one of the great examples of that where Tony was just, you know, he took off. And Ron's right there. Right. You know, he yeah. was always and the glue. <laughs> right. he, an incredible bass player. One of the best. Yeah. And uh, one of the best. Your musicians, who's going to be performing that night? Um, I've got, okay, so I mentioned Mike Zilber on tenor. I got Julio Cheto on bass. Um, and I got this young, this young guitar player named Spencer. Um, I think he goes to the uh, SF Conservatory, but he sound, I did one gig with him, and it was similarly. I like I had to. I want to get him out and 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 have him playing with with me. So so we got a nice guitar uh, quartet lineup, and it's going to be a lot of fun. Well, that's good. I'm, I'm I'm happy to hear that. I'm really happy. To hear I'm going to look forward to listening to this with the guitar instead of the keyboard. So that should be fun. That should be fun. Well, looky here, yeah. man. I know you got to rock and roll. You got kids. You got family things to do. <laughs> I do. Hey. I gotta. I'm always moving. <laughs> yeah, been there, done that. Yes, yeah, sir. <laughs> but anyway, Jeff, really looking forward to seeing you play next week. Thank you so much for your time, everybody. I want you to know this gentleman right here, Jeff Mars, will be at the Peacock Lounge in San Francisco. What is it? Five Five Two Hate Street in San Francisco. Two shows at eight o'clock and nine thirty. You know, fifteen. I mean, ten dollars in advance, fifteen at the door. Boys say straight, no chaser. So that's right. <laughs> so looking forward to seeing you.